few minutes, okay? Most of you already know him, but if you don't know who he is, his name is Omar Abich, and he works with Mortgage Heaven. He is our preferred lender within our company, all right? And he has years, if not decades, of experience in the industry. He is one of the most professional lenders that I know. I, I, I make sure that I have him cross pre-approve all of my clients, right? He'll tell me if he can do the deal. He'll tell me if he can't do the deal. Uh, but more importantly, he's a really, really good guy, and he cares about other people. So uh, I want to bring up Obar Abich really quick. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, anyways. So Mortgage Heaven, uh, we've been around for quite a long time, but 20 years of experience. I've been in the business for 20 years, and that, that means a lot, you know, because um, I've been in the business for about 20 years. The, the, the lowest person in experience in my office is no less than 10 years. And, that, and not that experience is everything, but it's a big part of it. You know, and you guys as realtors, um, you guys are learning specific training today, but it's important because who's on your team and is representing you. And I, I keep hammering this home. Um, every time I speak to realtors or a group of uh, lenders, let's say, um, who you surround yourself by is really, really important because at the end of the day, whoever you refer, if they don't do a good job, it's still an extension of you and that reflects on you. So uh, with Mortgage Heaven, you know, in a nutshell, we're a direct lender. You know, we close deals in less than 21 days, um, sometimes even faster. It just depends on however, how fast everyone moves. Um, we could do any loan from A to Z, you know, VA, reverse mortgage, I mean, you name it. So uh, there's pretty much nothing that we can do. But where we, where we um, excel is really communication and, um, and being available for our clients and the other people that are involved in the transaction. Because it's not just the clients, it's also escrow, it's also title. So it's really, really important that uh, availability is a big thing. Um, we recently had a transaction where a condo uh, had a litigation, and not just any litigation. I mean, it was a very there's two litigations on this condo. And you, if you know anything about lending, and I'm, I'm sure you've had some condos. I don't know if you, as a realtor, if you have a, a litigation on the condo, that's already a red flag, you know. And I've had listing agents not even know there's a, a, a litigation on, the, on an HOA, and that's that's like I, you should know that, right? You know, but so it's really surprising they don't, but. You know, you guys are awesome realtors, so you guys will know that. But the, the point is, I was able to get these two lawsuits. One was the HOA suing an owner because the uh, his renters were doing drugs on the property. Um, they did some damage on the property, and specifically in this property, but mostly because they're doing drugs and making noise like that. That's already one big red flag. The other one was has them do the metro that they a possible crack in an exterior wall, not in the not in the building itself, but it was the exterior of the property. And again, that's it damaged the property automatically is a red flag and the chances are a lot of lenders won't, you know, they won't send you a Senate to Fannie to get insured or Freddie to get insured. So we got the lawsuits, we got an HOA letter, we sent it over to the uh, condo team, they looked at it and some of our specific investors are really, really good. I mean, they're, they're all about closing, they're common sense type investors. So they don't just, you know, they don't say, oh, well, it's a red flag, forget it. They look at it and they work with us because we close a lot of uh, deals with them, you know, millions of dollars. They, they say, hey, we can do this as long as it makes sense. Give us an extra letter saying that, you know, it's, it's just in the outside. What's your, you know, is it going to affect, you know, the red, you know, the tenants or the residents? No, boom, they get it done. You know, maybe it's not a guarantee every time, but you want someone on your team who's going to do that extra work for you. And that's what we do. So I look forward to working with you guys. I mean, if you haven't done business with, with us, if you want to sit down and talk to us, have, have more questions for me, I'd love to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, come see me after the training and we'll talk. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right, you guys. Just a quick reminder: January's training event outside of the office is on January 23rd through 25th. It's a Tom Ferry training event in LA. It's at the Sheraton at LAX. Um, it is um, $297. Okay. Do what you can. I need you guys to be at that training event. Okay, it's very, very important that you participate in those training events. I know it costs money. I know it's a pain in the butt. I know it's a few days away from the office and a few days away from work. But the truth is, going back to what we said earlier, if you're not continuing your education to get better at this profession, how do you expect to make the buku bucks, right? Okay. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push it anymore. I just want you to know, January 23rd to 25th. $297, you can register online or you can see Chen so he can help you guys get registered too. All right, next slide. Let's talk about expired listing success. 
And I always started out with the CEO mindset, okay? Remember, you are a business within a business. You are the CEO of your own company. You own your own business of you, Inc. Okay, very important. So let's understand the mindset when you're working expired listings. Number one, everybody else is calling expired. Every other coach that is teaching other people is teaching them to call expired, okay? So, does that mean that you give up and not call expired, right? That's like saying, I want to start my own restaurant, but there's already restaurants out there, I'm not going to go into business, okay? It's the same principle. That's like saying, I want to go to med school, but there's a ton of doctors out there, why even bother? Are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. So, CEO mindset. What is going to differentiate you from the other agents that are going to call expired listings? Okay. Everybody's going after them on day one. Okay. Very, very important. The first day it expires, everyone is calling them. So, naturally, does it help being first or does it help being last? First. first. You want to be first, right? That means that what you're, when you're going to be calling the expired listings, you want to call them early in the morning. Now, I've heard of some agents and I've spoken to some people, some, some list, uh, expired listings that have said to me, I've been getting calls since 6.30 in the morning. Okay? Okay. I don't condone that. I don't recommend doing that. All you're going to do is upset them. Okay? So you want to be first, but don't abuse that principle. Okay? Mm -hmm. Most are relisting in about 90 days. Okay, most. Okay, these are statistics. So we know that within about 90 days, a lot of them are relisting during that time period. Okay? So that being said, you want to make sure that you stay consistent in following up with the expired listings and the expired leads. Okay? We'll talk about that a little bit later on. The other thing that I want you to keep in mind is the magic happens typically after about three to four objections. Okay? This is very, very important. Amateurs will do is, hey, hi, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, seller, I noticed that your property came off the market. I want to know when you're going to be planning on selling. I'm not selling. Oh, you're not selling? Okay, thank you. Good night. Click. And they move on. Okay? That is an amateur. A professional, a professional knows that the magic happens after you overcome about three to four of those objections. Okay? And uh, we'll talk about how to do that a little bit later on. Okay? Something else that's very important. Hey, James. Okay, I call it real estate porn. Okay? Here's real estate porn. Real estate porn is you calling them and you thinking that they're going to say, yeah, come over my house. I'm ready to list with you. It's not going to happen. You get on the phone and you have to master the scripts and you have to master how to close for appointments. No one is going to come over to you or on the call and say to you, come over my house, I'm going to list with you. And likewise, when you're sitting down with them during your listing presentations, few to none of them are going to say, give me the paperwork I'm ready to sign. Okay? Typically, you're going to have to master the art of closing for the appointment and for the listing. Okay? Now, you can acquire leads or you can buy leads. Okay? That's just the reality of it. Either way, you're spending money because time is money. Okay? And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Now, if you're going to acquire leads, you can do it the way I used to do it. Now, years ago, what I used to do is, I, you know, this is before all the technology that we have available now. Okay. What I used to do was I'd go in in the morning and I'd pick out a certain area, certain zip code, certain farm, and I'd pick all the expired listings within that farm. And I would download them all, and then I would use a tool to try to find uh, ways to get a hold of those people. These days you can use Spokio. Back then I would use white pages. Okay? And then I would Google them. And I'd research them and I'd handwrite their telephone numbers on the MLS sheet and I'd have it on my desk. Then I graduated from that to where I had an assistant that would do that and then have the expired listings on my desk ready for me with the telephone number so that I could call. Then I graduated from that to where now I pay for a service, right? Most of you already know that I use Vulcan 7 or Mojo Cells and those services get the expired listings for me, they extract them and they look for the telephone number for the seller that whose listing expired. They do that for me. So either way, it's going to cost you money. Vulcan or Mojo is roughly going to cost you between $200 to $300 per service. Okay, But if you think about it, that's $200 to $300 per service per day. Okay, So let's say that's about $10 a day to use Vulcan or Mojo. Think about the time that you'll save versus doing it the way I used to do it, which is you have to go in there, print out the MLS sheets, that's going to take you about a half hour to 45 minutes. Then you got to go and you got to look for all the telephone numbers. That's going to take you an hour to two hours to find all of that information. Now you've got three hours that you've invested in your eight to ten hour day that you're working and, all, and you still haven't spoken to anybody yet. Okay? Is it worth the $10 a day to have the system working it for you? Are you worth more than $10 an hour to get those leads so that you can prospect and get them? 
Absolutely, mm -hmm. right? But see, when you look at it that way, in the, in the CEO way, versus looking at it as like, oh, it's a $300 expense, versus $10 an hour job, you trying to get the contact information, all of a sudden it's a little bit different. Is everybody with me? Yeah. That's the CEO mindset. Okay, you're gonna spend the money, whether you want to admit it or not. Either you're gonna spend it in the form of paying for the service, or you're gonna spend it in the form of using your time. And as far as I'm concerned, losing my time, using my time, investing my time, whatever you want to put it, that's more expensive to me than it is uh, ten dollars a day. Okay. Now, uh, that's new school, and I just said either way, it's gonna cost you money. You can't avoid it. Okay. Let's go to the next slide now. Okay. Tools. What are the tools that you're going to need? Let's talk about this. If you're going to attack uh, expired listings, okay, you're going to need a headset. All right, a headset is a time saver because having to go in there and pick up the phone every time and hang up and dial it, it's it's a pain in the butt. Okay, uh, you're going to need a phone clearly. Okay, an auto dialer. I use an auto dialer. Okay, now there was a time where I was a little bit more crazy and I'd have two headsets <laughs> on, right? And I'd have one, one laptop running Mojo, and I'd have another laptop running Vulcan, and whichever one answered first was who I would speak to, okay? And I, it was pretty intense, all right? So I will say that I don't necessarily recommend doing that until you're a little bit more advanced, but it works, okay? So there's Vulcan 7, there's Mojo Cells, there's Red X, and then there's Arch Dialer, okay? You can research the ones that you'd like, figure out the one that fits your business model. My recommendation is Vulcan and Mojo. Okay. Now, as far as I can tell, Vulcan is much more accurate on the telephone numbers that it provides. In other words, I'm able to reach people on their cell phones. Okay. Mojo, for some reason, my own personal experience, and this isn't, I'm not endorsing anybody, <coughs> Mojo tends to give me more wrong numbers, but Mojo is a triple auto dialer, which means that it can mm -hmm. call three times the number of people in the same time that Vulcan just calls one. Vulcan typically calls one at a time, whereas Mojo is calling three people at a time. So there's strengths and weaknesses with both. I use them both, okay? The next thing that I'm gonna recommend that you use is, is BombBomb, a video email service, okay? And I'm gonna explain to you why I want you to use BombBomb. Next thing you're gonna wanna use is a text messaging service, okay? Now, the good news is, this is actually one of the few services that, that is free, okay? Because if you haven't set one up yet, you can set up a Google Voice number, which is free, you set up the Google Voice number, and then you can text from your laptop. Now, I know that if you're an iCloud user and you use Apple, you can text using the Apple messaging service from your laptop. I know that you can do that as well, but I'm gonna suggest having used them both because I'm a big Apple fan. I, use, I have, I have a, uh, an iPad and I have an Airbook, and then I have a Surface, so I'm constantly shifting between them both. Um, I will say that I found it easier to text message people through Google Voice as opposed to relying on the iMessenger, okay? So, I mean, it, you have to pick and choose what you like, but you can use Google Voice and that's free. And the last thing you need is a CRM, okay? What is a CRM? Top Customer producer. Relationship Manager, right? Mm -hmm. I use Top Producer, I've said it before, that's the one mm -hmm. that I use, um, but there's plenty other ones that you can use. But the bottom line is you're going to need a CRM, especially with the expired leads and the expired listings because the fortune is in the follow up, mm -hmm. okay, and that's the most difficult part. Okay, making contact with them once, hey, I'll give you a pat on the back. Making contact with them two, three, four weeks later and still following up, that's how you're gonna get the listing. Okay? Alright, so those are the tools. Okay, let's talk about over the phone. You're gonna approach your expired listings two ways. You're either gonna do it over the phone or you're gonna do it in person. And we're gonna talk about them both. Okay, first, over the phone, okay? There's two types of expired listings. There's the one that just happened, the most recent expired listing, and then there's the expired listing that happened one to two years ago, okay? I want you to approach them both, okay? I want you to approach the most recent ones because those are people that were clearly motivated and they wanted to sell, right, at, at, at recently. The people one to two years ago had an itch and for whatever reason it didn't pan out. That doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't interested in selling a year to two years later. So you want to go back and you want to call the expired listings from one to two years ago. Now, the best time to call, well, let me ask you guys, what do you guys think the best time to call expired listings is? 7.30 in the morning. 7.30, 8 a.m. in the morning, that's a good time. Early in the morning, okay? Early in the morning is typically going to be the best time to call the expired listings because 
Number one, you want to be one of the first few agents to get a hold of them so that you don't call them later on and you hear, oh, you're like call number 40, right? <laughs> okay. And, why, and, and just so you know, I still get over that objection as well. All right, but the best time to call is typically in the morning, but why else? Not only because of them, why else is it a, a good time to make your calls early in the morning? Because you get it done, you don't procrastinate. You get it done, you, get, you don't procrastinate, that's when your energy level is at its peak. Okay, it's typically in the morning, all right? So get it out of the way in the morning. Next thing you want to do is you have to know your scripts. It's very, very important that you know what to say and how to say it, you guys. Without knowing the scripts, you're going to have a very challenging time, especially when you've got someone who's getting 40 phone calls from other agents. If you don't know your scripts and you're making the calls, well then, you know, you're going to run into some problems. Now, the flip side to that is, well, Paul, I don't know my scripts, so I don't want to make those calls, right? Because that's going to be the, 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 the next argument. If I tell you you got to know your scripts make your calls, and you're like, oh, I can't make my calls until I know my scripts, it's almost like which came first, right? The chicken or the egg, right? But here's the thing. The, the truth is, you're not going to get as good with your scripts unless you're actually making those calls, all right? You're going to be bad before you're going to be good, period. There's nothing you can do to escape this. That's just the reality of it. And anything that you have ever become proficient at, whatever it might be, you were bad first before you became good. This is the same exact way. You're going to be bad before you can be good. Don't worry about that. Don't let that stop you from making the calls. And, and you know, having that kind of mentality is like saying, I got to look good before I go work out at the gym. Right? That mentality doesn't work. Okay? Same thing here. Yes, I want you to know your scripts, but that doesn't mean that I, I want you to know the scripts before you actually start working. I want you to, to try these things out so that you can become proficient at it. Okay? And then, the other thing is, I want you to be prepared to close early. Okay, what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. You get on the phone and you say, hi, I'm looking for John or Jane Doe. John or Jane Doe, my name is Paul, I get that, we've never met, here's why I'm calling. Your property at 1234 Mockingbird Lane came up as an expired listing. I wanted to see when you were planning on selling. Now, if they say, I'm planning on putting it on the market next week, I'm interviewing agents right now, that is in your cue to all of a sudden go through the entire script, okay? <laughs> I give you permission to close early for the appointment. So if they say, I'm interviewing agents, fantastic, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, I'd like to be there tomorrow, is 3 o'clock good or 5 o'clock better? In fact, it's better to say, I'd like to be there today, is 3 o'clock good or 5 o'clock better? Close for the appointment early. Be prepared to close early. Don't be such a slave to the system that you feel like you have to go through the entire script before you can close for an appointment. Close for the appointment early if you can. Okay, that's very, very important. All right, now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the script, okay, because I, 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 I do want to cover this. I think this is very important. All right, the minute you give them a call, I will say this, and some people can argue with my method. I'm going to tell you what works for me. When I call them, I don't say that I'm calling from a real estate company right off the bat. Okay? The reason I don't do that is because the minute they hear real estate, their ears shut down immediately. So the very first thing I say is, Hi, John or Jane Doe, right? My name is Paul or Agueta. We've never met. And I clearly state we've never met. Okay, why do you think I do that? There's a psychology behind that. Get your other attention. How does he know me? Right? You're new. You're, You're new. a new person. Okay, new person. They don't know what kind of call that it's going to be. They don't know where this is going, okay? It could be an emergency. It could be they could have won the lotto. They don't know what's happening, right? So we've never met. Here's why I'm calling. Now, what I say is, I'm sure you've gotten a few calls like this already. Here's why I'm calling. And then I go straight in. Uh, now, I don't ask, is it a good time to talk? Now, in the past, there was a time where I used to do that. Now, I just go straight for the jugular. Okay? Here's why I'm calling. Your home came up on, a, on our computer as an expired listing, and I was calling to see, <coughs> when do you plan on selling your property? Okay? I'm not going to ask, well, you know, are, would you list your property with me? I'm not going to ask, are you considering selling your property? Are you thinking about selling? That's too passive. That language is very, very passive. So this, when do you plan on selling again, is an assumptive, presumptive statement. Because now you're basically saying, so when you, I know you're going to sell, when are you going to sell again? Okay. So when do you plan on selling your property? Everyone's initial response is going to be what? No. No, never. I'm not selling. We're not selling. Okay? You have to be mentally be prepared for that. Okay? Here's why. Think about when you're going shopping. Let's say that you need, now in my case, if I need a new suit, okay? 
If I need a new suit and I walk into the store and I walk in and someone says, can I help you? Let's say I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I need a sports coat for an event that I'm going to go to and I'm going to buy a sports coat. And I walk in and somebody says, can we help you? What do you think my initial reaction is? What do I typically say? What do most of us say? Just looking. Just looking. <laughs> Just looking. That's our response, no matter what. Okay? That's the first thing we say. You call someone and you say, when do you plan on selling your property? They're going to tell you, I'm not selling anymore, we're never selling, whatever, but they're going to say no. So just be prepared for it. Don't be surprised by it. Just repeat what they say, right? So I have a saying, repeat, approve, and move on to the next question, okay? Never, terrific, fantastic. So tell me, if you had sold this home, where would you have moved to next? Okay, move on to the next question, all right? Now, they're gonna either give you another destination, or they're gonna say, you know, they're gonna say something else, okay? Now, if they give you another destination, guess what, you've got a good lead. Because now you know that you have someone that was actually considering relocating somewhere else. If they say, well, we weren't really sure, we were really just testing the market. In my opinion, now you're dealing with someone that wasn't really too sure about where they were going or if they wanted to sell, and that's why the listing expired, okay? Now, you can press a little bit further, but all I really want you to do is Repeat what they say, approve, and then move on to the next question. So if somebody says, well, we're really not sure. We, we didn't know where we are going to go. I see. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what you're saying then is you weren't sure about where you were going to go next. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, fantastic. Now, the next question is how soon did you have to be there? But if they're saying, if they say, well, we're really not sure where we were we going to go, what do you think the next question should be? I don't want you asking how soon did you have to be there, right? What do you think you could ask next? What did your uh, realtor do that you liked the best? Or, or what do you think you should have done to get your home sold? Yeah, but you know, we just weren't sure. We just weren't sure. So what you're telling me is you weren't sure about what your realtor could have done to get the home sold. Is that correct? Yeah. And what do you think you should have done to get your home sold? Okay, good. So you just keep answering the question, right? Here, I want you to ask <clears throat> questions that kind of get more information from them though, not necessarily about the realtor because you want to find out their level of motivation, right? right. Be, okay, so here's what I want you to ask. Uh, if somebody says, well, we weren't really sure where we were going to move to next. I see Mr. and Mrs. Seller. So what you're saying is you really weren't sure where you were going to move to next. So tell me, were you looking for something larger or were you looking for something smaller? Oh. Now I'm finding out a little bit of their motivation. Okay, well, we were looking for something smaller. I see, so what you're saying is you wanted something smaller. Now tell me, did you want to stay in the city or did you want to move out of the county, which was better for you? See, what I'm doing is I'm forcing them to pick one of the options so that I can find out where they were going and now I'm finding out their level of motivation. And if they tell me, well, we really didn't care, we weren't sure, we didn't know if we wanted something larger, something small, oh, I don't know what county or what city. Like, now I know why I didn't sell. There's no motivation. You, you guys get that? Yeah. I mean, I'm clearly asking them, so do you want something bigger or smaller? Well, we weren't sure. What, did you want to stay in the city or the county? Do you want to stay in the area? Do you want to move out of state? Well, we really weren't sure. If they continue to give you the, the we really weren't sure story, that's why it expired. It wasn't necessarily the agent's fault, okay? So let's say now they do say we wanted to move to L.A. Okay, so you wanted to move to L.A. Fantastic. Tell me, how soon was it that you, have to, that you had to be there, right? Whatever their response is. Repeat, approve, move on to the next question. Okay, how soon did you have to be there? I wanted to be there last month. Last month, ouch. Okay? Then we go into the what do you think stopped your home from selling? How did you happen to pick the last agent you were with? What did that, what did that agent do that you liked the best? And you keep asking questions, all right? Most people want to get on the phone and they want to do what? Close on the first question. They right? Hang up on them. Yeah. Get but off. well, most people want to talk. Oh, most okay. agents call and they want to talk about why they should list with them. You should list your home with me because I'm the salesperson of the year. You should list with me because I wear the craziest polka dot ties. You should list with me because, like, these are the things that people say to try to convince someone to list their home. I don't want you to do that. I want you to get good at asking questions. Which right? Like them talk. You want it's them talking. The more they talk, the better off you are. Right. Because what you're doing is you're diagnosing their situation, okay? If you guys think about this, all right? You step into a doctor's room, okay, doctor's office. You have a problem. Does the doctor sit there and start telling you about 
all the education that they have and all mm -hmm. the wonderful things that they can do to cure. What the doctor does is the doctor begins to ask you questions about your symptoms, questions so that they can identify what's wrong with you, questions so they can diagnose you, right? The doctor gets good at asking questions. The more questions he or she asks, the more information they have so that they can help diagnose what's wrong, so they can offer you treatment, so they can offer you medication. That's what a doctor does. Professionals in our industry get good at asking questions. He or she who asks the most questions wins. Okay, so what do you think stopped your home from selling? You sit tight, you wait for their response. The agent, repeat, approve, confirm. The agent, is that correct? Yes, the agent, fantastic. Okay, great. How did you happen to pick the last agent that you were working with? Bus bench hat. Bus bench hat. Fantastic, I see. So what did the agent do that you liked best? This, that, open houses, flyers, communication, whatever the response is, repeat, approve, confirm, and move on to the next question. Okay? Now, takeaways. You have to get good at repeating and approving everything they say. Everything on the other, everything that the other person on the other line says, everything that the other person in front of you says, you want to repeat verbatim. Do not try to interpret. There have been times where I've spoken to other people and I'm prospecting and I'll say, oh, I see, so you want to talk to the boss. Now understand that that could mean husband, that could mean wife, that could mean boss is the CPA, it could mean a variety of different different things, it could be, mean partner, you don't want to misinterpret what the boss means, okay, so the correct response is, oh, you want to talk to the boss, fantastic, now tell me, and you move on to the next question, okay, um, be prepared to close early if possible, now what does this mean? What this means is that if you start prospecting for expired listings, you call a prospect, you get on the phone, and you say, hi, John or Jane Doe, my name is Paul Arqueta. Listen, we've never met. I'm sure that you know by now your house came up as an expired listing. Here's, here's what I'm calling. I want to see when you plan on selling it again, okay? And their response is, well, we're interviewing agents. That is not your cue to all of a sudden start going through all of the other questions that are on the script. Okay? Don't be such a slave to the system that you don't recognize opportunities when they're staring at you right in front of them in your face. Okay? So if somebody says to you, we're interviewing agents, be prepared to close early. Right? Fantastic, John or Jane Doe. So listen, I'd like to interview for the position. Is today good or tomorrow better? Is this afternoon good or would you prefer this evening? Is this evening good or would you prefer tomorrow morning? Especially if they say they're interviewing agents, you want to close early, close quick, and get in front of them right away. Okay? Be prepared to close early if possible. Now, I want you to get, also get good at calling the bluff if they say bring me a buyer. Okay, this is another potential response that you're going to get from uh, expired listings when you get on the phone. Okay? Just to repeat. Hi, John or Jane Doe. My name is Paul Argueta. Listen, we've never met. Here's why I'm calling. Your house came up as an expired listing on the multiple listing service, and I wanted to see when do you plan on selling it again? Well, we're going to be putting it back up on the market. If you have a buyer, bring us a buyer. Bring us an offer. Okay, now, what most agents will try to do at that point is, again, they're going to, they're going to try to go through all the questions. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but here's what I'd like for you to do. I want you to call out their bluff. So if, a, if an expired listing says to me, bring me a buyer, bring me an offer. Fantastic, Mr. John or Jane Doe. So what are the showing instructions? Could you show as early as today, or would you prefer to show tomorrow? All right. Now, if they're genuinely interested and they're motivated to sell, they will confirm an appointment with you. But that's where you're going to find out just how serious they really are. Because if they say something to the effect of, well, you know, we're really not sure yet. We're not ready to quite show it yet. What that shows me is that they were telling you, bring me an offer, bring me a buyer, just to get me off the phone. But if they confirm a time with me, or if they say, you know, I can show as early as today, just text me or call me, I'll get you in today. Now I know I've got a hot prospect. So what I want you to do is I want you to get good at calling the bluff if someone says to you, bring me an offer, bring me a buyer. Your knee-jerk response should be, oh, great, so tell me, can I show it as early as today or, or can I show it uh, tomorrow? Which is better for you? 
I see. So can I show it within a couple hours notice or do you need 24 hours notice so that I can get the client inside and wait and see what the response is. Okay. So takeaways from over the phone prospect. Now in person, when you're visiting expired listings in person, it's going to be pretty much the same thing as over the phone. However, now that you're speaking to them in person, you've got that, that face to face, uh, uh, response. You've got that faith, that opportunity to speak to them directly, right? And you've got your opportunity to show your personality, okay? So I'm going to knock on the door, knock, knock, knock. Hi, John or Jane. Listen, I'm sure that you've already been approached by a ton of agents. Your house came up as an expired listing. I wanted to see when you were going to be selling it again. And then you go through the normal progression, the normal questions that you would ask in the script, okay? Here's my recommendation. Visit expired listings in your farm area within 10 minutes. Now, early in my career, okay, I was very anxious, very excited, very enthusiastic, and I would literally wake up, get on the, on the MLS, I would print out all the expired MLS sheets, and then what I would do is I would go visit anything within a 30 to 45 minute driving distance from me. That was a horrible, horrible thing for me to do, especially in LA because of all the traffic, right? So there was a lot of wasted time. I would remember I would be in one part of town in the morning. I'd map it out accordingly so that it made sense, but I'd be in one part of town in the morning. I'd be in another part of town in the evening. By seven or eight o'clock, you know, it'd be dark and I'd be still knocking on doors. I'd be leaving expired packages. I don't want you to do that, okay? It's, it's a good way to really burn yourself out, waste a lot of time, waste a lot of gas. It's unnecessary. Okay? Identify your market early. Do not go out there and prospect expired listings that is really anything beyond 10 minute driving distance. And I mean 10 minutes with traffic, okay? Because if you're trying to get out there, especially again in, in LA, in our, in our neighborhood, driving a, for, to a place that should normally take us 10 minutes can actually take half hour up to 45 one way just based on the time of day that you're going. You know, God forbid there's an accident, then it could cause even more problems, all right? So visit expired listings in your farm area within a 10 minute driving distance. Now, you also want to make sure that you have something to drop off, all right? What I do and what I've seen other agents do is they will go out and they will visit the U.S. Postal Service and they'll take some of their Air Express mail uh, envelopes, the big ones. Some people do it with FedEx. I've done the exact same thing. You get those envelopes and then what you do is you're going to print out the prior MLS sheet. Print out the prior MLS sheet and all I want you to do is to highlight the days on the market, the price, the comments. That is it. Don't use this as an opportunity to try to bash the other, other agent, okay? Once you print out the MLS sheet, you, you, you will be surprised as to how many clients have actually never seen what their property looks like on the internet or on the MLS. It happens. Print out the MLS sheet, highlight the price, highlight the dates on the market, highlight the comments, okay? And then what you can put on there is just a little note saying something to the effect of, I think I know why the property didn't sell, please call me, put your name and your phone number on there, okay? Include that in, the, uh, in your package. The other thing I want you to include is five to seven recent sales comps, but I want you to get them the client copy, all right? So if you go into the MLS and you print out the uh, prior sales comps, right, with, you know, again, you only need about five to seven, and you print out client copies, what that does is it prints out the, almost a, I mean, a customer copy. It prints out a customer flyer with your contact information on there, okay? So again, you're providing them with comps, you're providing them with prior MLS sheet, okay? And then, you know, you can try to be creative with it if you want. The, you know, we all, we have all received these bulky packages in the mail and you're never really sure what it is. What I used to do in the past, I don't do it now, but what I used to do in the past was, I would go and I would buy bags of planter's peanuts, just small snack size, and I would actually staple it to a note inside the, uh, the package that I would leave and it would say something to the effect of, you'd be nuts not to list your home with me this second time around. Okay, and I put my business card and I put that in there. Some people thought it was funny and I get callbacks and, and uh, other people, got, it's part of the territory, okay? So make sure that you have something that you're gonna be able to drop off. And again, when you're there, be prepared to know your scripts, okay? It's very important that you know your script. One of the most common questions that you're probably going to get if you do get in contact with someone that is an expired listing is going to be the price question. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna need to be prepared for this. If you show up to their house and they actually answer the door and you're able to give them your information and your package with the comps and the MLS sheet and your nuts, right? If you give them that information, be prepared for well, what do you think my house is worth? That's a that's a possible question that you're going to get. 
Now, the correct answer to that, or at least the answer that I use that has proven successful for me is, John or Jane Doe, I'm sure that you're well aware that there's a wide range of values in the neighborhood, anywhere from, say, 850 to about a million. What do you think about your price? How did you guys come up with that price, and why do you think it didn't sell? Okay. Again, he who asks, he or she who asks the most questions wins. So when they ask you a question, I'm not telling you to be evasive. You want to answer the question to the best of your ability, but at the same time, you want to reverse that question back on them and find out how they determine the price and why they thought it didn't sell. Now, at the end of the day, we know that there's only two reasons that a property doesn't sell. It doesn't sell either because of the price or the condition. Okay, Those are the only two reasons, so you want to be prepared to ask those questions tactfully. Okay, Know your scripts. Okay, Now, next slide. Nope. I'm going to teach you some tools that you can use to contact the expired listings when you can't get a hold of them by phone or in person. All right. First one, text them a video message. In the video message, it must include their name and their property address. Okay. And it's as simple as, hi, John or Jane. Listen, my name is Paul Argeta. I'm sure that you know by now your house came up as an expired listing on the multiple listing service. And I wanted to see when you were going to be selling it again. And if you would be considering offers on it or full price offers. Hi, John or Jane, my name is Paul Argeta. Listen, we've never met. I'm sure that you know by now your house came up as an expired listing on the multiple listing service. I just wanted to see when do you plan on selling again? Please get back to me. Simple as that, right? You, you text them the video message. You can also use a service like BombBomb to email them the video message, right? If you have their email address, you can email it to them yourself, right? I will use every tool in my arsenal to get a hold of them and I will send the same video message through text, through email, through Facebook Messenger, through Instagram Messenger, through Twitter, right? And lastly through Snapchat if I even have access to their email or a way to find them using those tools. The key here is on oh, LinkedIn. The key here is send them the message, make it personal, reference the property address so that they know you're sending it directly to them as opposed to sending it the same message to a bunch of people. Don't do that. I've done that. It doesn't work. Yes, does it save time? Yes. Is it a shortcut? Yes, but it's less effective, almost ineffective. All right? Now, um, that's what I want you to do for the no contact, okay? Messages at work, all right? These are examples of text messages that I've sent out that I use that people respond to. Hi, John, inquiring about Mockingbird Lane. Are you still planning on selling it? Something very, very simple when I text them. Two, hi, Jane, would you still consider a full price offer on your property? So if you can text them along with the video message, you can get a hold of them. Send them that message and see if they respond. Same thing. I'm going to use this message and I'm going to send it on all the different social media platforms that I can to engage them in conversation. Okay? Very simple. Number one, hi John, inquiring about Mockingbird Lane. Are you still planning on selling it? Number two, hi Jane, would you still consider a full price offer for your property? Okay? Now, again, these are conversations that are designed to, to engage them in conversation. Now, what you're thinking here is, after listening to number two, well, what if I don't have a full price offer, right? Or if somebody says, again, bring me a buyer, right? Bring me an offer, okay? We're gonna, we're, number one, we're gonna call their bluff. How simple is it to show John or Jane? Can we show it the same day today, or can we show it as early as tomorrow? And then wait and, they, and, wait and see what they say. Now, the next thought that is going to come to mind is, but Paul, I don't have a buyer. I'm not working with anybody right now. I haven't talked to anybody specifically about this property, okay? I'm not condoning lying to someone about saying that you have a buyer for a specific property when you don't. That's not what I'm saying to do. But what you can say in confidence, and what I say in confidence all the time is, at any given moment, I'm working with about 15 to 20 buyers, right? that are looking for homes right now. I'm sure that one of them is going to be interested in this home. I'd like to show tonight or is tomorrow better. All right, you're not lying there. Now, if you're a brand new agent, you don't have any buyers that you're working with, we, my team, our team is working with 15 to 20 pre-approved buyers and at any given moment, one of them's gotta be interested in this property. I'd like to show it as early as tonight or is tomorrow better for you and then you close again. All right, there's no shame in saying, 
we as an organization, we as a company, we as a team are working with about 15 to 20 pre-approved buyers at any given moment, and I'm sure that one of them is going to be interested in this one. I'd like to schedule a time. Is tonight good or is tomorrow better? All right? Okay, slide number six in our last slide. Follow-up. Okay, the fortune is in the follow-up. All right? 90% or more of all agents will stop calling the expired listings after three weeks of it not being on the market. So three weeks after that listing is expired, 90% of all the calls have, have ceased. Okay? There's only a 10% margin of agents that continue to call and follow up with those agents, uh, excuse me, with those uh, expired listings in order to, to capture that business, in order to successfully represent them. So you want to be relentless in your follow-up, okay? I want you to wear them down with your enthusiasm. That is the best way to get a client, by wearing them down with your enthusiasm, okay? Most agents stop after two to three weeks, all right? But more importantly, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a CRM, okay? Customer Relationship Manager, all right? Now, some people will use Excel spreadsheets. Some people will just use a log or a journal. The best thing to do is to have a Customer Relationship Manager, right? One that offers an email drip campaign, one that offers a text message drip campaign, and one that also reminds you of the phone calls that you're supposed to make on your calendar, okay? I'm a big proponent of top producer. That just happens to be the one that I encourage you to use. But there's other ones, and, and, and listen, they all have pros and cons. Pick the one that works best for you. Okay? And lastly, you need to know how to handle objections. It's very important that when you're following up with these expired listings that you know how to handle objections. And if I'm not mistaken, the next slide is going to cover some of the most common objections that we need to know. All right. So let's go over those objections. Okay, here's one of the first one. What will you do differently? Okay, so when someone gets on the phone with you and they say, okay, John, or okay, Jane agent, I'd like for you to come talk to me about selling my house, but tell me, what are you going to do differently than my last agent? The normal response, the knee-jerk response is for us to start telling them all the wonderful things that we're going to do to sell the home. Going back to our original conversation of making sure that we ask questions to diagnose their situation. I want you to go back and reverse that question on them. So if John or Jane says, what are you going to do differently? My response is going to be, that's a great question. So remind me again, John or Jane, what did you, your last agent do to sell your home? And let them give you the ammunition that you need. Now, some of them are going to say open houses, they did flyers, they did, they did digital tours, they did a video, they did 3D tours. Whatever it is that they may do, my response then is going to be, I see, and I'm going to repeat, approve, and I'm going to confirm. I see, so John or Jane, what you're saying is the last agent did open houses, they did a virtual tour, they did a 3D tour, they did a video, and they took professional photographs. Is that right? And they're going to respond, yes, that's right. Okay, repeat, approve, confirm. Okay, great. I'm going to do all of those things, John or Jane, and I'm going to do much, much more. I'd love to show you tomorrow night or, or is uh, Thursday better. And then you wait and see what they respond. And you close for the appointment. Handle the objection, close for the appointment. Okay, I, I have a, uh, an acronym that I use. It's called HOCA. Handle objection, close for appointment. Every time someone asks me a question, I overcome the objection. Handle objection, close for the appointment. Okay, so now... Again, I'm, preparing, I'm prepared for what people are thinking, right, as you're watching the video. So what if you say, well, I'm going to do the exact same thing that that last person did, right? So what if the person on the other end, on the other end of the line, the expired listing, says to me, well, you know, um, it sounds to me like you're going to do a lot of the same things that the last agent uh, did. And really, I, I, I don't see how that's of any benefit to me. So then the response is going to be, I see. So what you're saying then is the techniques that I'm going to use are very similar to the techniques that the last agent used. Is that correct? Yes. So really then what you're saying is, is that you had an agent, one of the best agents in the area with a very similar skill set to mine. So it's not the skills in as much as it's who you feel most comfortable with, isn't it, John or Jane? Which is why I'd like to sit down with you so that I can show you what I'm going to do and see, if we, see how comfortable we are with one another. Is Wednesday good for you? Is Thursday better? Okay, so we're going to reverse it. In other words, if someone really harps on skills and what you're going to do versus the other agent, it's not going to be about skills anymore because you guys have a very similar skill set. You had one of the best agents in the neighborhood, and I share a similar skill set with them. There's only about 3% of us that have those same skill sets. So uh, really what it boils down to is it's about who you feel most comfortable with, which is why we need to get together. Is tonight good or tomorrow better? And then you close for appointment. All right. Now, how much is my house worth? 
And I talked a little bit about that in, in, in one of the prior slides, right? If somebody says to you, how much is my house worth? You know, listen, John or Jane, that's a great question. As you know, there's a range of values anywhere between X dollars and X dollars. Now, I see that you listed your home for X dollars. Why do you think it didn't sell? How did you determine that price? And then you revert the question back onto them. Remember, we're asking questions. We are diagnosing the situation, okay? Do you specialize in this area or with this type of home? I love this question. So if someone asks me, Paul, do you specialize with this type of home? All right, my response is, oh, I see. So John or Jane, what you're telling me then is, or what you're asking me is, do I specialize in this type of home? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, I see. And so, which is better for you? Would you prefer an agent that specialized strictly in this style of home and brought you only buyers that were interested in that style of home? Or would you be open to, or would you prefer uh, an agent that brought you a wide variety of buyers, right? A much larger pool of buyers uh, that specialize in a wide variety of homes. Which is better for you? Which would you prefer? Now, the common sense response is going to be, you know, I prefer the agent that brings me a wider pool of buyers, right? That's going to be common sense. You want more buyers competing for, for, for the property. So again, you're going to reverse, the, reverse them on it. Same thing goes with this type of area. Do you specialize in this area? John or Jane, that's a great question. So you, what you're asking me is, do I specialize in this area? Is this correct? Yes, okay. Now, which is better for you? Do you prefer an agent that specializes only in this neighborhood? Or do you, do you, would you prefer an agent that specializes in a wide variety of neighborhoods and could bring you a much larger buyer pool from a whole vicinity, a whole another neighborhood, and, and, and take a look at your property? So wide range of buyers, narrow range of buyers. Which would you prefer? And most, most people are going to say the wide range of buyers, right? What is your commission? Be prepared for this question. Now, again, I like this question because if somebody asks me, Paul, what is your commission? My response is going to be, that's a great question. So remind me again, how much did you pay your last agent? Well, well last agent, we only paid him about 4%. I see, so last agent, you paid him about 4%. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I'm gonna make a mental note of that here, and when I get there, I promise that we're gonna talk about commission, but more importantly, we're gonna talk about price. Okay, we're going to talk about price because at the end of the day, if the property doesn't sell, how much do you pay in commission? Nothing. So we'll discuss commission, but we're also going to make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to price. I hope you appreciate that. Is Thursday good for you or is Friday better? Which do you prefer? And then you close again. Right? That's it. I, I don't debate commission over the phone. Okay? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell them I'm going to make a mental note about it and we're going to discuss it there. Because at the end of the day, if the house doesn't sell, there's no commission anyway. So why are we debating the commission right now? Let's first make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to price. I'll be there Wednesday or is Thursday better for you. Okay? Will you discount your commission? I see. So John or Jane, what you're asking me is you're asking me to discount my commission. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So if you want me to discount my commission by by uh, 2%, really what you're asking me to do is discount my commission by over 20%. John or Jane, are you willing to discount your, your price, the price of your home by over 20% so that I don't have to do any work and the property sells itself? No, so clearly you can see why uh, I'm keeping it at 6% so we can get the house sold and there's value in, in the way I'm gonna market the home and get it sold for you, right? That's just one way to handle the, com uh, the discount, the commission. The other question is, John or Jane, tell me, is your home a discount home? No, it's not a discount home. So really, you don't want a discount agent, do you? No, you want to make sure that you hire the best person for the job. And I feel like I'm the best person for the job. Let's get the paperwork out of the way, right? And you're nodding your head the whole time. Okay, so that's commission, right? Follow-up objections. You got to make sure you know how to handle the, these objections at bare minimum if you're going to be working the expired listing market, okay? And lastly was the questions and answers. Now, if you haven't figured it out by now, um, I had to reenact the second half of this training because the camera, last time we started, for some reason or another, cut off midway. All right. So if you have any questions about this training or any comments or recommendations, feel free to comment below and I'll make sure that I respond to those comments or questions. At any given moment, you can also email me at paul at reh corp, C-O-R-P as in corporation, dot com, paul at rehcorp.com.